Real YouTube is enter a chess tournament. Chess is a cool game that's a little like Pokemon. <laughs> okay, so many of you have heard of the sensation that is Squid Game. For anyone unaware, Squid Game is an internationally acclaimed and extremely popular TV show where players compete in children's games to win money at risk of dying. Anna Kramling, chess pro, decided she wanted to host Squid Chess. You might be wondering, what does Squid Chess actually look like? It's chess-themed or inspired games with 32 competitors where the winner takes home $5,000 and thankfully losers are not deleted. It seemed like fun so I decided to enter. The first round began and nobody knew what to expect. I was in the third group, which meant I could watch the two groups before me to figure out what I was going to be doing. The first game was Red Light Green Light with Trivia. If you answered a question correctly, you got to move your piece up a space. The first four players to make it to the final row would advance to the next round. My good friend and fellow VGC pro, Cybertron, was in the first group, but unfortunately... It is true, a banana is a berry, which means that only on on five up, bananas are curved because they grow upwards towards the sun. Two, see what you put one, up, buddy. up. <laughs> the answer is that it's correct. Good job, Mars. Oh, I'm very sorry, Anna Maya, Cybertron. Yeah, I think it's a little messed up you didn't give Cybertron any slack now that he's <laughs> <laughs> Now, ordinarily in this situation, I would say something like, I'm going to avenge my friend, but the thing is, I really, really suck at trivia. Before the pandemic, I would sometimes go to trivia with friends, and over the course of going like five times, I probably got a total of three questions right. However, I then remembered something very important. Luck is a skill. When it came time for me to answer trivia questions, I decided I would simply be luckier than Aaron was. Here are some examples of the questions Aaron had to answer. The Philippines has more than 6,000 islands. The national animal of Scotland is the unicorn. 50 Cent and Charlie Chaplin were alive at the same time. There are <laughs> over 85,000 seconds in one day. And here's some examples of mine. The wheels on the bus go up, up, up in the famous kids song. There are only three primary colors. The first line in Bohemian Rhapsody, Mama, I see a little silhouette of a man, Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the Fandango? With my incredible luck and easier questions, I managed to advance onwards. However, my luck hadn't run out yet. At the end of the game, the four people who advanced had to pick either a rook, a bishop, a knight, or a queen. I'd seen in the other games that the people who picked last were stuck with the bishop. I figured that it was possible that whichever piece we chose was who we'd be competing against in the next game. So even though I was second pick, I chose the bishop. 32 players have entered the tournament and we are already down to 16. It was time for the second game. It turns out I was totally wrong about my assumption. Rather than competing against the other players who chose your piece, we actually were going to be working with each other. The second game was something like a relay race combined with chess. Four players per team with a shared timer, the players couldn't communicate, and each player would take turns making the move for their team. I was on a team with Zane, Kostya, and Void, and I didn't know much about their chess abilities. There was one catch with this game. The piece you chose was the only piece your opponent could promote their pawns into, so, as Team Bishop, our opponent could only turn their pawns into bishops if they promoted them. Once again, luck is a skill. I was the second of two games this time, so I sat down to watch the first match, and oh boy was it a grueling battle. Team Queen took a significant early lead, but they were up against Team Knight. And because of the way the rules worked, Team Queen could only turn their pawns into knights. This led to an interesting endgame. Bishop C1. Oh, <laughs> yes! Yes! Oh, oh After an arduous battle, Team Queen managed to close it out and advance to the top eight. And with that, it was my turn to play. I guess this is as good a time as any to talk about my background with chess. I played quite a bit from second to sixth grade, but when I went off to middle school, there wasn't a chess club, so I stopped playing. I did play just a little in college with friends too, but, uh... <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah, so uh, definitely a different environment. So now it's time to play again, and my main concern is to not blunder and lose the game for my team. The game starts, and I focus on making some non-influential, solid defensive positioning moves, hoping somebody on my team knows more than I do. Then, all of a sudden, I notice something that the other team hasn't been covering. Our queen is perfectly positioned to get either a knight or bishop from the other team. Hoping I'm not missing something obvious, I go on the offensive. Queen b5. Uh, oh no. With a piece advantage, my team is able to continue converting to maintain our lead. Eventually, Zane finishes the game with a well-timed checkmate. I've made it to the top 8. This was further than I'd expected to make it, but I thought to myself that as long as I'd made it this far, I should probably try and win the whole thing. However, I had no idea the challenges that lay ahead. We were down to only 8 players remaining. Anna gathered us into a voice call and told us that we needed to pair up. However, she didn't tell us if we'd be competing with or against our partners. Immediately, two of the chess players paired up, followed by Zane and Toph, two melee players sponsored by Golden Guardians. That left myself, Void, Nim, and Kostya. Nim asked if Kostya was a chess pro, and then asked to team up. That left Void and I as the last kids picked for dodgeball. Anna revealed that the next challenge would be Bug House, a super chaotic chess mode that I'd never even heard of. The way Bug House works is it's a 2v2 game where pieces captured by your partner can be used in your game. The pieces can be placed anywhere on the board, with the exception that pawns cannot be placed in either the first or eighth rows. Void and I would be playing against Toph and Zane, which was a problem. Toph not only clearly had experience playing chess on top of his high natural intellect, he had experience with Bug House specifically. Toph was so experienced, in fact, that during the set, he would go on to not only play his game against me, but also coach Zane in his game against Void simultaneously. Don't let him take any minor pieces. It's okay if he takes pawns. However, Toph and Zane made a crucial miscalculation. You see, these two Smash pros had forgotten their past. Toph and Void both grew up in Hawaii, and yet when it came time to pick teams, Toph hadn't even considered Void. And most of you probably don't even know this, but Zane and I actually went to college together. We even had a class together. And on top of that, one of my residents when I was an RA was one of Zane's good friends, making me one of the earliest known instances of a Zane fan. And yet, despite our past, Zane chose his sponsor, who pays him, over me. Void and I knew what we had to do. Our friends had changed, and the only way to get through to them was the same way Naruto aims to get through to Sasuke, by beating them up in a predetermined format, in this case chess. However, there was still a major problem. Toph is cracked at Bug House. I am not cracked at Bug House. Bug House is a super unintuitive format, and it takes some getting used to. Getting used to that Toph had already done. The game begins, and it's frankly looking pretty rough. Zane, you have a bishop that you can deploy if you need it. Take with the pawn. Yeah, okay. it's fine. It's fine. Boy, I think it might be up to you, buddy. I'll try and get you what I can. So I realized I had to think fast and do something quickly, or I wouldn't be able to bring Zane back to the village. So I relied on one of my most practiced skills, making a lot of noise without actually saying anything. Wait, if they can talk, I can talk too, and there's no reason yeah. that I have to let them actually communicate clearly, right? I could literally just fill the void with uh, as much noise as possible just I to get distraction, right? There's nothing against that. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. I'm a professional talker. I couldn't have it. I'm curious currently set up, because I don't really need to think to Despite my best efforts, things were looking bleak. This is probably a good time to mention that in Bug House, the first player to win a game wins the set for their team. Meaning, even though Toph was slapping me around, I could pray that Void could clutch it out. I was really struggling to hold on, let alone get Void any pieces that could actually help. But then I remembered, luck is a skill. If I wasn't a better chess player than Toph, I just had to be luckier. Playing two chess games at once is no mean feat. It can be tough to keep track of everything, especially in a mode like Bug House. And Toph, in maneuvering around both Void and I, made a small error. He left his queen exposed. Now, at this point in the game, I'd already lost my queen, so getting his queen normally would simply even out the game. But this was Bug House, and by capturing Toph's queen, I was able to send it to my partner Void. In a move that can only be described as maximum gamer, Void managed to put Zane on the back foot. And with the sudden appearance of the queen I captured, he clutched victory from the jaws of defeat a mere few turns before Toph finished me. Void and I had managed to make it all the way to the top floor, and we were ecstatic. However, Anna had plans to make sure our happiness was short-lived. Anna decided that the best way to reward our incredible teamwork, determination, and grit was to pit Void and I against one another. The fourth game was called Chesser or Professor, and the way it worked was simple. On screen, Anna would show us one famous chess player and one famous scientist, writer, or mathematician, and we would have to guess which one was the chess player. As a reminder, I know very, very little. 
the little brain space I have is reserved for knowing that Tropius has a base speed of 51. If you ask me to name famous chess players, I don't think I could name more than three, all of whom are modern. And did I mention these questions were intentionally difficult, featuring no modern figures? Well, I knew what I had to do. If you can't be better than your opponent, you can simply be luckier than them. The game started out, and it was pretty even. Four. <laughs> Why don't you just put the coin in? If you wanted to do the 50 50, this is, this is the educated coin. coins. Did you both say William Röntgen is a. That's a 50 50, guys, baby. One and four. Guys, there is. But Rund, this is an easy one. Röntgen is literally an X ray. So That's just what the X is for. Void and I each earned one strike, with the first hit, three strikes being eliminated. We'd been voting together, but the next question changed that. See both the signs up. Oh? So the better person at guessing out of these two is Wolfie. Good job, Wolfie. Suddenly, Void was one question away from elimination. I was so close, I could taste victory, and that's where I stumbled. Two, one, I wanna see those signs up. <sighs> We're opposite. KQE was a very famous scientist. Paul Morphy is one of the best chess players that we've ever had in time. Good job, Void, for getting that. I took a risky gamble on the next question and ended up tied once again with Void. The next question would be the last, and it was intentionally confusing. Two individuals with extremely similar sounding names. Alexander Fleming or Alexander Flumberg? Ah! We're opposite. Oh no, well, it was fun. The correct answer and the chess player was Alexander Flamberg. Good job, Wolfie. You're Thank you. going to the finals. I'd gambled and it had paid off, though at a price. My bug house partner Void was eliminated. He wished me luck in the finals and I promised to do my best. Thank you. Good luck, good luck. Thank you, Void, thank you. Little did I know, my luck was about to run out. I made it all the way to the finals, and I was feeling optimistic about my chances of winning the tournament. Enter Kostya, aka Chess Dojo. Kostya is an international master at chess, which is the level below Grandmaster. I knew the finals would be difficult, but I figured if the game were something like trivia- There are only three primary colors. I might have a chance to cheese out a win. Do you have any idea of what the last game is going to be? No. Uh, maybe rock, paper, scissors, or maybe Pokemon, who knows? Unfortunately for me, the finals was just chess. The twist being it was auto-balanced chess, meaning the game would take away Kostya's pieces in accordance with what it thought the difference in our skill levels was. Uh, I'm run ranked on chess.com, so the game took both Kostya's knights and one of his bishops. The game began, and it honestly was going pretty well. Chess Dojo is starting right now with a knight and two other minus minor pieces less. I feel like this is looking very solid so far. I mean, Kostya is trying to get a kind of queenside attack. He's not bringing his rook in. Uh, so he's trying to like maybe break the center and I feel like Wolfie's playing really well as well Like he's not in any single way like blundering anything or doing anything like that Wolfie's playing fantastically. Look at that beautiful 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 Outpost on C3. I don't he's know. So well. A5 is also a great so move. Doomed. Look I'll at that A pawn so I'll take the rook. I made a couple exchanges early, but I'd quickly run into a problem the timer. Unlike Pokemon, where I am extremely skilled at manipulating the timer, the chess timer caused me a lot of trouble. Because I wasn't as experienced with chess, I had to think through every one of my moves and the board state they would create, meaning I was burning a lot of time early. By the time we reached the mid to late game, I was really starting to rush. This pawn is gonna have a hard like, time. Like, why did you do that? <laughs> no reason. <laughs> it's a blunder. Um, I I moved too quickly. The timer stressed me out. I gotta make something happen, but how? 30 seconds though, 30 seconds versus four and a half minutes. All right, whatever. All right, he wants to attack. He's just gonna put me in check if I don't do anything about it. Cover for that, because I'm out of time. Nice, he saw this threat of C5 attack. I can put him in check that way, which forces a move to here or here. What just, what just happened? What it's okay, don't freak out. Oh, yeah, uh, and then he promotes, I see. Takes so I either give him a two uh, seconds, he gets one second, away. Wolfie, one second. Woo! Dang. Yeah, okay. It's equal material. Yeah, the timer really stressed me out. Timer and Kostya wins the game. Now, while the finals were best of two, so there would still be another game to play, it was at this moment that I realized I was probably doomed. You see, chess is a skill-based game. In the pure gameplay itself, there's no luck involved. No crits, no high roll, no low roll, no freeze, no sleep. So far in this tournament, I had been skating by via simply being luckier than my opponents. But what do you do when luck isn't enough? The second game begins and I realize that I need to do something different or I'll absolutely lose on time again. I decide to play fast, loose, and aggressively. We can, we can talk about this, right? 
<laughs> you don't have to do this. Maybe I should just start making moves that like look like they're what real chess players would do, you know? Yes, like that's um, a good idea. I'll be honest with you, I'm just trying not to screw up my position too much. I see, I see. Yeah, what I noticed last game was that like you you just developed your board so well that like all my pieces felt kind of walled in and you had a lot of um, freedom, it felt like. I don't know if this is right, but Ooh, I, I like that. I really like right. that. Right, that's not nice. Like I didn't, I didn't move so you could move up. I wanted to do something. You know, when I was younger and playing chess, I was like, man, pawns suck. But now I'm like, pawns are so broken. They gotta nerf the pawn. Oh, we already used a minute and a half. I feel like I'm going at blitz speed. Yeah, slow down, man. <laughs> oh man. Race. No, not again. <laughs> I'm tired of these pawns. I gotta be honest. Black is still um, a lot better because of the pieces, oh. the extra pieces. Oh, but now yeah, he blundered the bishop. Yeah, I realize. Hindsight, it's not looking great. I'm gonna be honest. There's gonna Still be a second chance. queen coming up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Costa yeah, was just sure. waiting for Miss Nathan um, to get advantage. It's a great, you know, <laughs> do I, way of playing. Uh, it. Pretty, pretty much game over, regardless. No, no. It... Okay. GG. There yeah. we have GG. the checkmate on the GG. board. Played, uh, really well that game. No, that was really tough. In hindsight, not my best idea. That being said, I don't think I was going to be beating Kostya regardless of what I did, so I don't feel too bad about losing. And that's it. I finished second place and won $2,000, and more importantly, I was not deleted from existence despite losing in the Squid Game. I'd like to say thank you to Anna and Josh for hosting and organizing, and thanks to all my opponents. Everyone I interacted with throughout the tournament was super nice, and it was cool to meet some new people. I also really love chess, even though I haven't played in a long time, so it was great to play again. I would love to do more chess content on Twitch in the future, so if you enjoyed this video, let me know as we could potentially get more on the YouTube channel as well. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed.